In breaking news, New Zealand has recorded its first COVID-19 cases in more than 100 days, with an entire city being forced back into lockdown. Businesses in Aotearoa's largest city are facing extended restrictions and a tougher deal all round. New Zealand has extended a lockdown in its largest city for 12 more days. Ka taki tētahi, ka ara taki te katoa. If one lifts, we all lift, and when one falls, that's heartbreaking. Pivoting wasn't an option, and I realised that essentially closure was really the only option that we had. You know, we're hanging on by a thread, and we need a rope ASAP. We've put our heart, soul, blood, sweat and tears into this entire business that you see around it. I, I just don't want to see it fail, you know, because part of me fails with it. Tamaki Makoto are carrying the load for the rest of Aotearoa. We know this. The Prime Minister tells everyone that, but we don't feel that kindness. We don't want to recover back to pre-COVID conditions because they were failing Māori and Pacifica. We have all of the resources at our fingertips for us to transform into an economy of mana. At the centre of every Māori business is a whānau. And so when you're stuck in the middle of a global pandemic and in lockdown for three months or more, and you hear the heartbreaking news that a Pākehi Māori has folded and shut its doors, you know fundamentally that it's not just that a business has closed down, but a whānau has lost their income. The community that surrounds that whānau has lost its means of tūhono or connection and the effects are rippling. Auckland's lockdown can be felt everywhere. This is definitely the worst day of lockdown for me. Day 80 whatever. Up to this point, bro, I was actually thinking I'm one of the lucky ones. You know, I was gonna get back to business. My team's tough and ready and, and we're gonna be running hot. Knowing that I've got their support, that makes me want to get up and make sure that we've got a mean as co-papa to drive once we come back to Mahi, but for how the boys are jumping ship, <laughs> yeah, that's tough. This one's posed a lot more questions for me as a business owner as well. And I've, you know, had to borrow money to stay afloat through this period. This will take a couple of years to climb out and get back to a place where we can start to feel comfortable again. Yeah, the whole world has um, been on a bit of a roller coaster too. Yeah. It's because it's like this, eh, bro? And then the water's coming up, and then you get back up for a bit, you buy some time for another week, and then it's coming back up. So yeah, it's always there, always chasing. Not trying to think too much about it, because far out, I've just accepted that we're in this, and it's out of, our control. It's not my making, you know, that my business is in such a tight spot. I think I've uh, used up all my all my chips, I <laughs> used up all my coins on this one. Yeah. Since the start of last year, we're basically approaching a billion dollar loss of consumer spending in the heart of the city compared with 2019. And that is sitting on a relatively small number of shoulders. The same sectors hit over and over and over again. So that equates to an average of $750,000 per business. We've had 84 weeks now in, of restrictions and they just don't have the reserves to be able to sustain more than one and a half years of restrictions. It's very, very difficult. You can't direct the winds, but you can adjust the sails. And that's something that is so relevant in this time. 
it's easy to stress and feel anxious and um, feel demotivated by external powers but you know you really need to focus on what you can control and what you can do in the moment that can help your future. We started about three years ago now. We initially started off as a small store down the uh, alley of four lane and um, it was just a little hole in the wall you know and we pretty much started from that I think a little bit about 30, 20 square meters and um, in those three years we grew three stores and went from about six employees to 30. The first lockdown was actually the, um, the fall of our new market store because our staff are like our family you know like we were a tight-knit kind of team. They're not just employees they're friends as well so you know we kind of go above and beyond for them. Having to cut some of them loose was probably the hardest thing that we had to do. I think in the hospitality industry, there's a massive wave of emotions right now. Like being unable to trade and even being open, able to trade at a lower level, you're still only making a percentage of your sales that you were. The fact of the matter and the fact has always been is that businesses needed cash three months ago. A wage subsidy and the RSP are great, but they don't, they're just not cutting it. It's not sustainable, you know? Your employees can't live off that, you know? We can't live off that, and it's, it's frankly disheartening. All of them, they were shops, and all of them are closed uh, just after the, the first lockdown, so 18 months ago. Like this one, this one, this one. I can't count anymore. So many. It's easier to count the one left. So this shop, I had to, to close it. Maybe now it uh, was a year ago. I just couldn't uh, keep the staff to keep it open just because we don't have enough customer. Just before the lockdown, we had uh, 12 uh, employees, a lot of full-times and part-times. I'm down to two employees part-time, only a few hours. We have to let go your staff, and it's pretty difficult when you had them working for you for some of them 15 years. I still remember going down to the beach that morning in March 2020 and realising that everything for us had changed forever. This was going to be catastrophic for us in tourism and that we had to make some decisions fairly fast. Pre-COVID had two tourism businesses. One was called Fine Art Tours and that's in hibernation at the moment. And one was a soft adventure brand called Adventure Capital. And what we were most famous for was guided bike tours. But 90% of our revenue was derived from international visitors. So as you can imagine, 90% of your revenue being an export business essentially and the tap being turned off overnight was um, yeah, pretty catastrophic for us. Over the last 18 months, Auckland has really struggled, not just from the loss of international visitors, but we don't even have domestic visitors to rely on. Just before we went into Alert Level 4 this year, that was the final call, was basically saying, this is, there's just no way we can survive. It was a grieving process of going through that stage by stage and coming to the acceptance of it. What the government kind of needs to appreciate is that once these small independents have gone, we're, we're losing a huge part of our tourism story. They need to get real about creating some new funding mechanisms and they need to do it urgently. It should have been done over a year ago. I don't know how some of the people I know, how they're expected to come back from that with the levels of debt they have. Data from last quarter shows us that nearly 20,000 businesses closed in the last quarter. 75% of those are Auckland based. Never before have there been that many closures in that period of time. And so we're in a net negative of growth of businesses where closing businesses is actually higher than the number of businesses starting. The hope is starting to dissipate and you can see it in the community, you can see it within people. All in all, I think the government's uh, deal and approach to this whole situation has been a little finite especially for small business. Our revenue is down 84% and that's just not sustainable for that period of time. What we need at the moment from the government is 
just that certainty, like, we will open this day. We've certainly been asking, along with other business groups, we've been asking the government to, to provide as much clarity and certainty as possible. So, for example, we've asked for an opening date, 1st of December. That is geared around having the vaccine passports, having the vaccination rates up. But it would be enormously helpful because people would then be able to plan and actually make decisions for their business. The other thing we're asking for is some uh, activation funding because we will need to reactivate uh, not only the city centre but across the city because it's such an enormous health, economic and social shock. And then the third area we've been focused on is some quick wins. So for example, the outdoor dining is a very important component for the hospitality sector. It's quite a critical time now and I think uh, the more we can see from the government to support that is going to be very important. The entire COVID environment has been highlighting how we need to support local and support, in our case, Māori businesses and so forth. This lockdown period, this particular lockdown period, has been tough on us, it's been tough on other businesses that I know of. The fundamental difference or negative impact that we've had as far as sales are concerned and revenue is concerned is not being able to put on shows or put on events where we do the majority of our sales. For our business, What's really important and has always been the most important thing is the relationships. The relationships that we have with people that we work with, people that we collaborate with, people that support us, our clients. It's always been that way and it'll always be that way. We are really fortunate here in Tāmaki Makoto to have a really strong foundation of Māori and Pacifica businesses. The Māori economy here in Tāmaki Makaurau is worth $12.5 billion, and 88% of that asset base is in the hands of privately owned Māori businesses. So it tells us that entrepreneurship and owning our own businesses is a really important pathway to mana motuhake. With every disaster, there is always an opportunity, and this is our opportunity to flip the COVID pandemic on its head. And we came into this lockdown with significant economic disadvantage. To get out of it, we need to be backing our Māori and Pacifica businesses. They are our best bet, and the things that we can do, we can do at the stroke of a pen. This is our time to really transform the economy into an economy that is just, that is inclusive, that is circular and it's regenerative, where the prosperity is shared amongst everybody. Uh, look, we've had our own cases of COVID in the business. We've had to react and we've put some controls in place to make sure that we keep everyone safe. Our business is around 350 strong. Glad to hear that we're in our meeting this morning. Two people that have got COVID were the only ones infected. So good to see that our controls that we've got in place here are working um, and that we're managing the risk around it. One thing that is clearly obvious, we're just going to have to be dealing with COVID on the daily. So it's just how we're actually managing to deal with each case as it comes and how we actually deal with that in the company. When you, you're up against it, you've got to find a way to, to make things happen. So the decisions we make shape the, shaping our future for the people we've got. We want to make sure that we're creating opportunities for them. I actually put up a, a post on our socials the other night saying how in level four, the, the restrictions nearly saw the end of Nom Nom, but um, in level three, the communities breathed life back into us. Um, and I've also, I've always said to Gelo that if we look after our people, if we look after the community, the community will look after us and that's exactly what's happened here. The Pacific community um, and the Māori community have come through in numbers. They've supported us in a really big way, so much so that we haven't been able to handle the demand of orders coming through at the rapid rate that it's been coming at. In 2020, when COVID struck, we had to change our business over and remarket it towards fizzy drinks, soap, sanitizers, all that. This is the outcome. 
I believe in what we're doing. I really believe in my product and I, you know, I sold my house to fund the business because we're growing, but with growth comes expenses. 90% of who walk through our doors are Pacifica and Māori. 85% are young women. I've read a, a lot of business have closed their doors. I wouldn't even like to think what that was like. We adapted ourselves. We always adapted, we always took risk. We did it our way. Being able to own our own businesses, to be those entrepreneurs, is not just a benefit for an individual person. That benefit, that success, it reverberates across our whānau, it reverberates across all of our Hapurean communities, and it reverberates into future generations. We are actually very positive about the future of the city centre. Where we're going to have to work really hard is around the short to medium term, to support our businesses as much as possible, to create an environment that people are happy coming back into, and actually uh, making sure that we do the very best we can to get through this next period. But the reality is there are a whole lot of things that I think people are going to be pleased to be back, working with people in person. It's great for idea generation, meeting people by chance, building culture, all those great things, there is definitely cause for hope for the future. Usually see more the positive, but it's uh, really now not depending on us. We all feel for all business in Auckland uh, because it's, it's just so unfair. As soon as we open, we will start to recover. For the future of my business, I think that's a hard question. You know, there's so much uncertainty in the time that we are in now. We really don't know what's going to happen. We don't know what's going to happen two weeks, three weeks, four weeks on. We have to do the mahi, to head down, try to do what we can, where we can, control what we can, and persevere on. We were looking towards building ourselves up to a degree where we could have another place and we could start doing more functions, more events, that kind of thing. But this has slowed everything right down. Lockdown has just made it impossible now. Even though my business is closed now, I'll always be proud of what we achieved. Even though it's, it's failed through no fault of our own, but it's just failed through circumstances. But you can always look back and say, I'm proud of that. When the world shifts in the way that it has right now and the ability to run your business the way that you usually would or grow as you usually would is taken away from you, that's really hard. It's really hard. When we hear about preserving and protecting the mana of the business owners, it is about how do we do that so we can collectively lift others who may not be able to stand up for themselves. And that's, I think, what the purpose of, of this kaupapa is. It's about raising the voices of those who are strong enough to share their story so that they may reach others who are struggling.